Patrick here, head of legal at Trust and Will. Today I'm going to share the basics of our end of life planning guide. Before I begin, I want to address the fact that planning for the end of our lives is not easy. It's something no one wants to spend time thinking about, and it's certainly something our loved ones don't want to think about either. However, I invite you to think of this as a loving process where you'll have peace of mind knowing that your loved ones will be relieved of what could be a heavy burden. I'll start by explaining why end of life planning is so important, then dive into the five steps you can take to incorporate your end of life planning into your estate plan. So what is end of life planning exactly and why is it so important? End of life planning is the process of formalizing what you want to happen when you reach the last season of your life. Once you know what you want, you'll express your wishes as part of your estate plan. Your plan could include things like end of life care preferences, medical wishes, and funeral arrangements. The reason why end of life planning is important is to make sure your wishes are known. There are too many occasions in which an individual passes or becomes incapacitated and their loved ones realize that they never had a conversation about their desires. This ambiguity and guesswork can lead to stress, burdens, and even guilt. By providing an end of life plan, you are giving your loved ones a clear action plan during a difficult time. Now that we've got that covered, let's move on to our end of life planning guide. Here, I'm gonna reveal the five steps included in our ultimate end of life planning checklist. Step one, prepare your end of life planning documents. First and foremost, you'll want to create your end of life planning documents. Here are some of the documents that you might include. Your living trust and or living will, your last will and testament, your powers of attorney and healthcare proxy, and your designation for organ or tissue donation. I'll go over trust and wills next, but I want to point out here that a living will is unique in that it serves the purpose of expressing your wishes about medical decisions in the event you are alive but incapacitated. You can also use a power of attorney documents to appoint individuals to make legal, financial, medical, and business decisions on your behalf in case you can no longer advocate for yourself. In step two, you'll want to decide whether you want to establish just a will or a will plus a trust. Wills tend to be more simple and to the point, whereas trusts allow for more control. Use a will to name guardians, plan for your final arrangements, and express how you want your assets distributed. You might opt for a trust if you want more say over how and when your assets are distributed, and if you want to include any stipulations. Trust also bypass the probate process if you want to retain privacy. Step three, make a list of your assets. Next, it's time to create an inventory of your assets so that you can then designate how you want them passed down. This might be tricky because assets can accumulate in a variety of ways throughout your life. When we think of the word asset, things like cash, savings, and investment accounts come to mind. While these are all great examples of assets, you also need to remember things like your personal belongings, real estate, family heirlooms, and business assets. It might help to conduct a thorough audit of anything and everything you own. Step four, determine your end of life housing plans. Where would you like to live out the last of your days? Would it be an assisted living facility, a nursing home? Would you prefer to stay in your current home and hire an in-home caregiver? Determining the type of end of life housing can be more intricate than you think. For example, if you choose an assisted living facility or nursing home, you'll need to research things like amenities, medical care provided, friendliness of staff, quality of meals, and living culture. Cost is another important factor to consider. We all deserve to live out the ends of our lives in dignity, so it's important to find the right fit and express exactly what we want. Step five write down your final wishes. When a loved one passes away, friends and family members go through a period of loss and grief. All too often, the deceased's closest relatives have the burden of figuring out what they would have wanted and making funeral arrangements. What if you wanted to do something unique, like incorporating your remains into a tree pod that can be planted? Or what if you were against a traditional funeral and wanted a celebration of life? Your family members might have zero clue if you don't leave your specific wishes behind in your estate plan. Although you may have an in-person conversation with them about your desires, 
your estate plan is the perfect place to note down specific plans and arrangements. Trust me, your loved ones will be thanking you during what is already an incredibly difficult time. Well, that does it for our end of life planning guide. The key takeaway here is the more planning and arranging you can do on your own, the more you can relieve your loved ones during what will certainly be a challenging time. We have many more tips about end of life planning, including how to talk to your family members about your plan. I included a link in the description below. So what did you think about our checklist? Do you understand the importance of end of life planning? Let us know in the comments and thanks for watching. If this video was helpful, please like and share it with your friends and family. Be sure to subscribe to our channel for more videos like this one. For more information on end of life planning, visit our website at trustandwill.com.